Hello, welcome back to City Planner Place, where we are building the city of Verde Beach. And this is a B episode. Every now and then, after releasing an episode, I look at the comments and see that I've made a significant error in judgment or in planning. And this is one of those episodes. There were a couple of things that I was thinking about changing as I was making this build, and a couple of things that I inadvertently left as they, uh, as they were at the end of the episode. So one of the most significant things that I le that I that I changed from my sandbox build, and I, I do sandbox all of these episodes before I build them, is this bridge. Now a number of comments said that this would be much better as a tunnel to preserve the vista from the train station. And you know what? I agree. If you were standing here in this park, you are going to see a bridge. <laughs> That's not an excellent view, especially when there's really the opportunity to have an excellent view. I also added some landscaping that blocks the views, which is pretty strange. So we're gonna do a little bit of modification in this area, and the first thing that we're gonna do is bury this bridge. We're also gonna do a few other things that were suggested in the comments that never really occurred to me that I really liked after I heard them, but this is where I want to begin. So goodbye bridge, that's where we will start. And the nice thing about this idea is that it really opens up some, some significant developable land. Okay, so one of the suggestions that was in the comments that I really appreciated was stretching out this, this tunnel to make it a little bit longer than it was going to be. So I'm gonna do that in this particular build. Now I'm gonna need to reconfigure the road network a little bit here, but I think it's for the best. So what I'm doing here is just trying to make sure that I'm not intersecting at this particular junction. I don't want people crossing the road at this particular point. So there is a lack of symmetry between these sides and I'm not all that concerned about it to be completely honest with you. The thing I'm more concerned about is the lack of pedestrian connectivity in this area. It's a little bit of a hike. There are a couple of things that I could do to improve this. One of them would be actually adding that connection here. I am concerned though that if I add that people are gonna cross right here. That might be a risk worth taking though, so we are going to add that quick connection. Okay, so we had to use some eminent domain to make this work, but it worked out okay. So I'm much, much, much happier with how that turned out. So now if we're standing in the park, let's check out the views that we're getting. You can see that they're obstructed by some landscaping. So why don't we sit back here and eliminate some of the obstructions. So that helps out quite a bit. This little plaza here, it looks centered to me when I'm, when I'm looking at it, but I think it shifted just a little bit. So I am gonna move this over and hopefully that will give us a better view from this plaza. Yeah, now when we're looking, we can see the ocean, I guess unless we're at street level, in which case we can't, but we at least have a view of something. So uh, it's not perfect though. One of the other suggestions that I really, really liked was actually taking this botanical garden and moving it. Now, I understand that this is a visual obstruction potentially, but I think I'm gonna move it over here. So we're gonna call a mulligan on all of these properties. And what I'm thinking is I don't want to necessarily extend the park in a in a formal way, but informally we are going to make this connection here and we'll eliminate these paths. So we at least have some visual continuity through this area. Now with that, there was a suggestion that I make this a one way couplet. And I really like that idea because if you look, we don't really have another north south collector through this area. And even that said, we are really lacking a lot of east-west connectivity in here. You kind of have to circle around. So being able to have a good north-south connection to be able to choose this east-west connection, I think would be really valuable. So we're gonna make that change now. And I am gonna use tree-lined roads, which was another suggestion brought up in the comments that I really, really liked. So the other nice thing about this is that I'm using the uh, the roads 
to define that this, this space continues on. So we are gonna just leave this empty here, landscape it, and really, I guess we could extend the park, why not? There's no, actually, the, <laughs> interestingly, the park is already there. So all I have to do is landscape it. I don't think we're gonna do much beyond that though. So we'll let this be a little less maintained. You'll still get some nice views of the garden and be able to see the ocean behind it. And I think this would be a very comfortable place to be around. And what I might do actually in this area to, I guess, demonstrate that it's a, a, a space that's not meant to be, I guess, experienced by, uh, by, by I guess, uh, on, on foot, is fence this in. So this will be a place where you can you can enjoy the view, but whoa, <laughs> we could take down all the trees. All right, so we'll want to fix that. That was a that was an oopsie. There we go. So it's a place that you can view, but not necessarily a place where you want people walking through. We want to protect some of this landscaping in here. Okay, so now when you look from above, you can see that continuity through here. And I like that a lot. That's good. So one of the things I want to do is protect zoning in this particular area and it's not developing right now because there's not a lot of residential demand but it will in the future the other thing i want to do is make sure that we have pedestrian facilities through here to connect down so unfortunately this is an eminent domain day and we are going to use it <laughs> so here we go and at least we have a, a connection through here we could add some, some short landscaping here if we wanted to as well. And I think to cover up some of the, these imperfections that we're seeing with the terrain heights, that might be the most appropriate way of handling it. Ooh, that is really tough to look at already. I don't want that at all. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna try something else. Okay, so what I've done here is tried to use similar landscaping to what we've used in the park. Kind of a visual cue to harken back to the park to show that this is one place. So I really like this improvement and I think it's gonna make this feel like a, a cohesive neighborhood. Now I don't know that there's a lot that I could do to soften that landscaping, but I'm, I'm gonna give it a shot anyway. If I can't soften it, it's not the end of the world, but if I can, just a little bit, it will improve the aesthetic so much. And you can see, first of all, I have no soil. <laughs> so let's uh, go back to the ocean and dredge them up. I wouldn't say that this is significantly better, but it's a little bit better and I'll take a little bit. That is good enough for me. In my opinion, uh, that little bit is, is uh, significant, so. Uh, another thing that was mentioned that, uh, you know, was kind of an omission on my mind uh, that, that I guess I just missed is bike facilities through this area. Now, I know that I mentioned when I added the bike facilities to this neighborhood over here, Sugar Hill, I, I hate when bike facilities are added after the fact. And it's it's something that is is not really planned for up front and it's, it's a retrofit. Unfortunately, I have created a situation where this will be a retrofit. So we are gonna retrofit this through here and I wanna make sure that this goes through the park. So ultimately, this is my destination. That is where I wanna to get to. And I'm saving uh, I'm saving the zoning on sunset, or the, 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 uh, the right of way on sunset for another special build. So that's why you might be wondering, why is he avoiding sunset? That would be an excellent spot for facilities, and I, I agree. However, I do have another idea. So one of the unfortunate things is I'm gonna be taking some of these, uh, these industry roads and converting them over to bike facilities, but I wanna make sure that we are really able to access a variety of locations, uh, be they residential or commercial or uh, industrial for that matter uh, you know I think it's it's very important to give people options when they're trying to get to work so I'm creating a bit of a network that people could circulate through so that's that's why I'm I'm kind of meandering through here so from this point someone could use the sidewalk or if they were a, a more um, you know a more confident cyclist 
they could potentially utilize the uh, the road itself. Uh, in the game, you can't do that. It's sidewalks, but that's uh, that would be my thought process there. So now we are going to use this diagonal road, which I don't think we have a name for yet. Oh, we do. So we're going to use we're going to use this road right here, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get our bike lanes up there. This will be our bike corridor through this area, and I think it's going to be a good connection. That said, I am leery of mixing that density of vehicular traffic or or projected density of vehicular traffic with bike with bike traffic. So I'm, I'm second guessing that decision and I'm going to go in, in a different direction. That direction is going to be using this road right here, which is Brock Street, which is already kind of the main drag through this area. And we're going to use that as our bike corridor. So now that we place a number of uses in this area that uh, or are really important to this area. So that, that's going to make this an even better corridor for the bike network. Perfect. And I might as well extend this into this residential neighborhood over here. There aren't many other uh, active transportation or, or, or alternative transportation options in this neighborhood. So I do want to add that. And a suggestion that I saw in the comments that I really liked was adding a... Uh, a dog park near this uh, near this elder care facility and I, I really think that's a great idea the uh, the as well, let's see dog park sorry so the the idea here would be that the elderly individuals that live here could walk walk dogs have dogs and, and use them as comfort animals and I really think that that is a fantastic idea so putting this right here not only is it good for the neighborhood but it's good for the elderly people who are over here and it's significantly nicer treatment than placing them near a warehouse, as I've done in the past. So I think it's a, I think it's a win all around. Next, and this is probably the thing that's been grating on your nerves as much as it has been grating on mine, I missed a little bit of zoning over here. A little bit. That is what it took <laughs> to make this look a little better. And with that, we're going to call a mulligan on uh, the turn I took with the street. First of all, I forgot to rename it. This is Ocean. This is one of the most prominent roads in the city. It's river to ocean. It goes all the way around. It's probably the longest road in the city at this point. The longest continuous. Oh, Founders Park info booth burnt down. Repair. <laughs> so I don't think I've seen any other fires today. Just that one. Okay. So anyway, I, I don't want to end this arbitrarily kind of just randomly at this point. So we're going to continue that a little bit. Okay, so let's get this street renamed. I think we have the ocean name over here. We will carry that through all the way to our Veterans Memorial, and that will be the end of Ocean. So that's much better. We, we will again need to unfortunately level some buildings in this area. However, the nice thing about doing this is you start to open up ocean views for all of these people who don't get, live directly on the water. and you know, if if they can't have a view directly of the ocean, I think that this is probably the next best thing. So, uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm certainly a big proponent of this. And this is probably one of the few instances where maybe the large brush tool would have done a good job. Maybe I wouldn't miss some of those areas because now I'm going to kind of go through, just make sure like there was another spot that I missed. And there are some areas over here as well that need zoning added. Now, filling these in, it's probably a little bit easier with these other tools, with the, with the paintbrush tool, but you know, every tool has a purpose. Now I'm just backfilling some of these areas that have opened up as a result of the changes that we've made to this network over here. And again, similar to what I did over here, even though I'm uh, leery of people crossing at the, the underpass, I think it's important to have that pedestrian connection. I probably should have done this prior to adding in this zoning, but I didn't, so we will uh, mulligan it and uh, make, a, make, a, make a fix. Okay, I like that a lot, but here's what I don't like. When you look through here now, there are significant areas without landscaping. Let's turn off the zoning so we can take a look. 
They're just these areas that are completely void of, of, of any sort of landscaping. It's not because it's undeveloped, it's because of the zoning uh, block configuration that I've created. Now I purposely left this empty so that I could add landscaping, but I haven't done it. So in this particular neighborhood, I do think I wanna do that. And the other thing I wanna do is I'm gonna modify a section of the this this uh, Randall Point, and I, I want to know in the, fee, in the in the comments if you prefer this sort of configuration. So I'm going to start out with this. So what I'm thinking is we have these great park paths that are self-leveling and have some amenities uh, built in. So if I use these instead of the standard paths, we might get some nicer looking connections. So I'm gonna add this through, and then we're gonna go in at street level and we'll see how you feel. Okay, so you see that these pads are quite a bit more level, and in my mind look a little bit nicer. They, they almost look alley-like in my mind, which is kind of a nice amenity. What I would ultimately like to do would be to spend some time in a detailing episode going through these and just really making this feel, each one of these little pedestrian alleys feel like a place so I'd go through and I would add some landscaping through here so something like this so as a pedestrian this would be your vantage point you'd have all of these you know really tall towers look at that how well this this block frames that view of this let's see office skyscraper uh, that's a <laughs> a, a, a very great name <laughs> so um, that's uh, this would be something that you know I, I would I would carry through basically every block in the city that has one of these pedestrian facilities so let me know in the comments how you feel about this do you like this do you think it's overkill and a, a, little, a little much I could see I could see this going either way but I think some of the areas that could benefit from this the most are probably over here, particularly near the in the club district where we've got some real wonkiness going on. I mean, this is this is bad. This is so bad I can't leave it. <laughs> I can't get this close and, and look at it and go, it's fine, because it's not. It's not fine, and Fiddy wouldn't be fine with it either. Okay, so you can see what a big difference these pads and a bit of landscaping can, can do. That said, it's not a, a, a process for the faint of heart. I probably should start working this into my normal building workflow. I just get so into building massive places that sometimes I lose track of how important the details are. I think that's part of, that, that, that's kind of a personality quirk of being a planner, not an architect. I think an architect would probably spend all of their time right here, and a planner is right about here. So, you know, and and here. So, uh, that said, that doesn't mean that that's right, and I need to spend more time on this, or maybe I don't. I'd like to know how you feel about that. So, that said, last things I want to do, there were some roadway issues that I did not remedy, and then we'll do that landscaping. The roadway issues are really that I didn't set the priority on this road, and as a result, we have some issues. So let's go through here. We'll adjust these roads. We'll make this a priority road. We'll make this a priority road. Ooh, interesting. So maybe that's why. There's a little bit of this that is not actually sunset. Interesting. Okay, so now it's a priority road, and I can go through here and modify the junctions. Okay, it was not a priority road, now it is. So I can go through here and modify the junctions. I don't think we're in a bad spot with traffic by any means. In fact, let's take a look. We're at 79%. I like to stay above 80 if at all possible. I don't think that the areas that are creating this issue are necessarily in this area. A lot of it's the Drake Oil Company. 
And then we just have some other hot spots. Ooh. Ooh. I do not like this at all. This is bad. What is going on here? Getting sidetracked. <laughs> so one of the things we might do here, let's prioritize this movement here. This is me deviating from roadway hierarchy and dealing with the ramifications of that decision. And it's looking bad. <laughs> Truthfully, it's looking pretty bad. So uh, there's this connection here that I don't, I don't love. Let's eliminate that. We're gonna force this traffic to take a longer route, but unless we're gonna add a roundabout, I don't know how we make this work in this particular area. But at least right here, there's a little bit more logical connection. There's a little bit more distance, and I think it's gonna function a little bit better. So that is the route that will go, and I, I bet you that's gonna bump our traffic up. Or down. <laughs> or down. <laughs> okay, well, let's just pretend that that didn't happen. <laughs> All right, next, let's take a look at a couple more junctions, because I know we have a couple more issues. Okay, so we have priority here now. And we can make this a more attractive route by doing this. So we have a stop sign on this junction here, and I don't love it. One of the suggestions that I got was to kind of make this whole area a roundabout. And I think that's interesting, but I still kind of like the idea of placing a roundabout around this particular rock. That said, removing that stop sign and just kind of letting things flow seems to be working. That's not safe, so we're not gonna do that. But I do think I might have a three-way stop and allow through movements through this area, and then go ahead and add some stop signs and manually manage some of this traffic in this area. And really make this collector, or what would function as a collector, make it a, make it a collector by prioritizing those movements. So that's one way that you can do it, is to really show some emphasis here. You see that there's a lot of places right now where we're getting some strange movements. And part of this is if we've made this a collector, we shouldn't really have those buildings focused on this road. So turning it around would do a world of good. And now we can let those movements flow freely through here. Unfortunately, that does mean that we have removed all of our trees. So let's get some of those wonderful sick trees back. Now we're kind of out of luck adding any more. <laughs> so we can't, we can't really weasel them in. I guess maybe one here. Okay, so you can kind of see that we were able to change our traffic pattern. And unfortunately, it looks like the traffic pattern has changed in a way that I don't necessarily think is healthy. But you can see that there's a general flow of the traffic. I think that we might over-engineer this and try to match those traffic patterns and get rid of the complication here. So I think this is gonna add a lot of pressure over here, and I don't think that's desirable, but we're gonna give it a shot. Because again, now we have two movements forcing traffic into this area, but that is the predominant movement that is being sought out, so it could work. And we see we're back at 80%, so something worked. <laughs> so I think we're in a better spot I did want to do a little bit of landscaping. I think we're going to do just a little bit and get in between some of these buildings. Okay, so I think I've adequately demonstrated that the tree limit in the game is meant for me. And just this little bit of landscaping. You, you can see it popping up in between buildings. In my mind, it makes the city feel so much more complete. As you can see, that these are you would never see a neighborhood where there's just no landscaping unless the neighborhood's brand new. But these neighborhoods would have new trees planted. And you know, for things like this tunnel, you would fully expect this to be a lush landscaped area. So why not have that landscaping? It doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be there. Uh, you know, and truthfully, having perfect landscaping might feel pretty unreasonable. So with that, I'm pretty pleased with the changes that we've made. Again, we have that vista through the park. It is gorgeous. I love that. That is wonderful. Let's take a quick look before we go at transit. That was something else that was mentioned. So we have 150 riders here, 274 there. One thing I just realized that we want to do before we go is get 
bike facilities to the train station. So why don't we have bike facilities that kind of go along this ring road, really emphasize how important transportation is in this area. There we go. So now we have a really nice bike network in this area to get people over here. We could probably make one more connection. I'm just gonna keep this episode going. By the time I'm done with this, I'm pretty sure this episode is gonna be longer than the episode that it was based upon. <laughs> so that is uh, that is the way things go, I guess. <laughs> oh, and no park fee here. We need to absolutely not have a park fee and uh, no fireworks. We don't, we don't need fireworks. <laughs> Maybe we want to advertise it. I don't think that th this isn't going to be a park that levels up a ton. Uh, we do have enough entertainment for the next level, but I'd be really shocked if it goes beyond that. That said, this is really going to help our ridership, I would imagine, in this area. And you can just see there are just tons of people. 432 passengers. Let's take a look. We have pretty decent ridership. Uh, we have almost 4,000 residents and 2,000 tourists per week. The tourists are using predominantly the trains. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, that's probably because we don't have an airport, which is coming next. So uh, I think this is a good place to leave it. I think that we're in a good spot. And I think we've done some good things in this episode. Still a lot more to do, but we've made progress and we fixed some of those issues. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you like this little B episode. If you did, please hit that like button. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so and hit the notification bell. If you want to know when I release new videos, I sometimes randomly drop them like I do in this one. Uh, if you want to talk with me about this, consider joining me in the discord server. I'm in there almost every night and uh, I'm there to, to chat with you. Just uh, feel free to send me an ad. And I do want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. They help me produce this content and I appreciate their support. And I want to thank you for watching this. I will leave you with a brief city tour. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.